what, what are the requirements for our different applications, so if we're streaming video, making a voice call, what do we need for the network for the application to work well? Well, the, the data rates vary. For example, voice audio applications need data rates of tens to hundreds of kilobits per second. Video, we have more information, so we need higher data rates. The number of errors in the network impact upon the performance, on the application performance, the amount of delay and jitter. What I'm going to do is try and demonstrate using a video and see how some of these criteria impact on our performance. So what I'm going to do is stream a video between my two laptops and see and change some of those network characteristics and see what happens with performance. What have we got? The we're going to clean, stream from a server to a client. My blue laptop is the server and the grey one is the client. And the server has some video on it. I, I think it's MP4. We'll see in a moment. So what I want to do is use the network to send, instead of playing the video on the server, but to send the video to the client and as the client receives the packets containing that video, display them on the client. I've connected my two laptops via a LAN cable. So we're going to use the LAN cable, gives us a data rate of 100 megabits per second with my LAN cards. How do I stream video? Anyone? Anyone know with some software to stream video between two computers? You need a, of course, you need two pieces of software. You need the application at the server to, to generate the stream and send the packets. So what the server does is it takes the video and encodes it, or in fact takes the video and puts it into packets to be sent across the network and there are different ways to stream, there are different protocols to be, to be used. We'll use one called RTP to stream and so the server takes the video and puts it into packets, sends to the client and the client receives those packets and essentially has received the video and then uses its decoder to display the video. So we need a a streaming server and a client to play it. In my case, I'm going to use a program called VLC, which is a multimedia player, but it also can act as a server, a streaming server. Uh, let's just check. The top terminal here is my client, and the bottom I'm logged into also my server as well. So. Let's just ping and check the network. I think the server address is 111, just remember. Server is 1.1.1.1 and client 1.1.1.2. We see in our network the, res the response time, the round trip time is about half a millisecond. To get there and back is about half a millisecond. Now let's take a video on my server and stream it. The instructions or some of the instructions I've got on a, a, a web page that describes the things I'm do, doing here. So let's just go through them. Uh, I will not explain all the commands I use, but you'll get a basic idea and I need to remember them. Let's start the stream. So what we need to do is start the server and also start the client. I'll in fact start the client first. The client program is called VLC. Not 10.10. 10.
what I'm going to tell my client to do is to receive, and that's the client's IP address, 1112, and the port number I'm using for this streaming application is 5004, and RTP is the protocol that the, the video is encoded in. We'll see a description of RTP later, but let's just see, see it work to get started. So the server is going to use RTP to send packets to the client. I'll also need to start, of course, the streaming server. And I have a video. I'll use VLC. The C means the command line version. There's no graphical user interface. Choose the video, and I've got a trailer for some old movie here. We'll see it in a moment. And then tell the server to output. So what the server does is takes this video, an MP4 video, and outputs it as packets out onto the network. So the command line to do that is a bit complex. It takes some time to learn. It says use RTP. The destination is my client. 1112. The port is 5004. And the method for encoding the video into packets is called TS, the multiplexing method. You don't need to remember or understand all of those details yet. Just know that this command will take the video at the server and output packets onto the network to the client. I'll start the, the client. It's not receiving anything yet. We'll show it over here. When the server starts, it should start seeing something. So this is on the client computer here. We should start seeing the video. OK, the video starts. And it goes for 60 seconds. What brings you to the land of the gatekeepers? I note the quality of the video and the audio. I'm searching for someone. <laughs> A dangerous quest for a lone hunter. I've been alone for as long as I can remember. So that's our baseline. That's what it should look like and sound like with a normal stream. So we have a network which is fast in our case. 100 megabits per second is the data rate supported by my network. Round trip time, the delay is small. We want to see what happens when we change different characteristics of the network. What happens if we change the round trip time, increase it, how does that impact on the quality of the video? And what happens if we, for example, introduce packet loss? So let's try some of those things and see what happens in our video. Let's shut that. And this is somehow related to your assignment in that we'll use TC and IP tables to look at the impact of packet drops and, and delay. Let's stop the server. Let's first try packet drops. On the, on the client, the one at the top, I'll use IP tables to drop packets coming in. So packets coming into my client, I'll use the statistic module to randomly drop packets with some probability. Let's start with what? Start smaller. One in 1,000. OK, this is one in 1,000 packets will be dropped. So 
IP tables is a, is a firewall, but here's a module, the statistics module that says of a, a certain number of packets that come into my computer, I'm going to drop, take the action to drop some of them. The probability 0 0.001 means drop one in 1,000 packets. Okay, we've set that up, and now let's run the video again and see what happens. So we need to run it on the... I'll get the client ready. I'll just move it across so we can see it. See if you notice any difference in the quality. Sit down, people can't see the video. What brings you to the land of the gatekeepers? See what difference. I'm searching for someone. <laughs> Anything? A dangerous quest. It's very for hard to night. notice any difference there, that it's. For most for cases, it I looks fine. Remember. It looks like the original video. So, if there was a small amount of packet loss there. The network, we'll see later how many packets are sent, but of 1,000 packets sent, one of them was being dropped. It had almost no impact upon the end application. The application still works well. So, in this is the case of the packet drops. A small amount will not impact upon the application with multimedia applications. Let's increase it. Let's change it to delete that one and change to 2%. 2 in 100, just to make it a bit bigger. Start the client. Start the server. See if you can notice any difference in the quality this time. Okay. See the artifacts that what the, brings you to the, the problems with the video? I'm searching for Just two percent in this case. So our multimedia applications, in this case it's streaming. So in this case, we're sending the data across the network. Some packet loss, some data loss we can tolerate. The application still works fine. With a web download, sending an email, we cannot tolerate any packet loss. And hence we use TCP to, to have retransmissions. Here we're not using TCP. It's in fact using UDP, if we look closely. Some packet loss, okay, but a large packet loss starts to have an impact from the user's perspective. Let's try something else. Let's remove that. So we're back to normal. We no longer have any packet loss. Let's look at delay in the network. Currently, the delay is... The one-way delay is 250 microseconds. Round trip time is there and back. With streaming, we really care about one direction. We're sending packets just in this direction, our video. The delay from when I create the packet here until it's received at the client is half of the round trip time, 250 microseconds. Let's increase the delay. Let's say we had a network from here to somewhere on the other side of the world where the delay was much larger. And we can use TC to do that. And I'll do it at the server. And 
have to remember TC, we add a queuing discipline. What we, what we can do to add this uh, delay is to use TC which in the server when it sends the packets, before it sends them it introduces this extra delay. So it creates the packet, it's about to send it, and TC will delay that packet for a specified amount of time. And that's what we're going to specify here. It emulates some network, net M. Let's add 500 milliseconds, half a second delay. The second value, what have I done there? 500 milliseconds, 1 ms. The second value is not important yet. That's, we'll see the impact later. That's the jitter, the delay variation. So the idea here is that this 500 milliseconds now from server to client will have a delay of not 250 microseconds but 500 milliseconds. What's going to happen with our application? Is the video going to look okay? Hands up for yes. Hands up for no. Okay, let's try. So I start that. Did I do it correct? Have I done something wrong? Ah, I know what I've done. I've, let's, let's try again. I've already got a delay on my, uh, I think I've typed that wrong. And now my computer's delayed by 50 seconds. Uh, Try again. Delay, 500 milliseconds, one millisecond variation. Okay, and let's ping just to test. So now when I ping from server to client, the round trip time is the normal round trip time plus the 500 milliseconds. Okay, because I've introduced this, this fake delay into one of the computers. Let's see how that impacts on our, on our video. Get the client ready. Start the server. You see the delay in it starting the video. The what audio brings you to the land through, of the, the gatekeepers? I'm searching for someone. to start playing the video okay so for streaming delay is not a big issue for stored streaming because what happens is that the server starts creating the packets to send sends them they take a long time to get to the client because of the delay in this case they take 500 milliseconds half a second to get there but for playback of the video once we start receiving them 
we actually were receiving the packets at a constant rate, and we can play back the video at a constant rate, giving a smooth playback. Okay? So the delay is not an issue in this case. It impacts upon the startup, but not once it started. So let's try something else. Here we can think of the delay was 500 milliseconds plus or minus 1 millisecond. So some packets were delayed 499, some 500, some 501. That's the idea, this delay variation. Let's increase the delay variation. And let's try, let's make it big because just to demonstrate the impact, the delay variation is now 100 milliseconds. I have to change that, not add. Let's get this right. And let's try a ping and see if that's working. See now the, the ping is varying between about 400 milliseconds and 600 milliseconds because the delay we've introduced is 500 plus or minus 100. So there's some random variation in the ping here. So we have delay variation. Let's see how that impacts on our video. <coughs> It's receiving something. Audio started again because of this delay. It delays the video because it's got more information. What brings you to the land of the gatekeepers? I'm searching for someone. Especially in the fast-moving scenes. I've been alone for a long time. You notice when remember. there's a lot of motion there that the, the quality goes down, and that's the way that videos are encoded. In that, the the way to compress video is okay. A video is made up of multiple frames. One simple way to compress the video to store it in a smaller space is instead of storing every frame, take one frame and store the difference between that frame and the next frame. Because in, if you look at two frames in a period of, uh, what, 20 milliseconds, many of the pixels will not change, especially if there's not much motion. So if the video is, uh, has low motion, then there's not much change between frames, and therefore you don't have to store so much. You can compress it much more. But if there's a lot of motion, the pixels change a lot between frames, and it cannot be compressed as much, or in other words, you need to send much more information across the network. So, and the way that it's decoded at the, to playback means that with a small, or with the amount of jitter that we had in this case, or delay variation, especially when there's high motion, there was some impact upon the quality. One more test. What else can we test? More jitter. Let's try again. Quickly, let's... Let's try again. Actually, um, change the jitter to a different value.
plus or minus 200 milliseconds. I forgot TC. What brings you to the land of the gatekeepers? I'm searching for someone. So in the parts that... I've been alone for as long as I can remember. And at the end, even. Okay. What... We will not change right now, but what data rate is needed to send this video across the network? Our network supported 100 megabits per second. What is needed to send across that network? Well, it depends upon how much information we have encoded in that video. Uh, let's look at the size of the video. So at the server, the video is, what's this? 4.3 megabytes. That's the size of the video. So effectively at the server, we have the video and as we stream it, we need to send that video to the other side. In fact, when we play, we can look at some statistics. Let's just remove our... Remove our delay, revert back to the normal network. What brings you to the land of the gatekeepers? One thousand kilobits per second. It's going up and down. I'm searching for someone. This content bit rate. content is being streamed in this case and it varies because with a video again because of the video with different motion it's compressed and there's at different times there's a different amount of information to send so the the rate at which my client is receiving the data and that's what we're showing here the content bit rate the rate at which I'm receiving the content is varying Usually when there's a lot of motion, it was high, and we may have noticed it went up to about 2,000 kilobits per second, 2 megabits per second, and there were some low cases, in fact, in the, the credits at the end down to just 100, 200 kilobits per second. what is the content that we're sending? We'll come back to this rate and look at the average in a moment. This shows the, the format or the codecs used for this video. Of course, a video in this case contains the, the video and the audio. 
The movie contains both. So the video in this case used the MPEG-4 codec. The resolution was 854 by 480. 854 by 480 pixels, so 854 across, 480 down. Frame rate of 48 frames per second. Each frame had this number of pixels. Let's assume each pixel, it doesn't say here, was 24 bits, 24 bit color. If we have 854 times 480 pixels, each pixel is 24 bits, then that tells us how many bits we need in one frame. And then we can work out how many bits per second that raw video is. Let's use a calculator. We have 854 times 480 times 24, 24 bits per, pic per pixel. So that's 9.8 million bits per frame, and there's 48 frames per second. So that is, what do we get? 472 megabits per second. The raw video, excluding the audio, because that's even more, the raw video in this case, without compression, is 472 megabits per second. So if we want to stream this raw video across our network, it wouldn't work. My network has a data rate or a capacity of 100 megabits per second, I've got to smoothly play back that video by streaming. I send at 472 megabits per second, but only 100 of those 472 arrive every second. The others will be lost or delayed, and it will be terrible, unwatchable playback at the client. If I sent the raw video, this is the raw data rate, but MPEG-4 compresses that video. And the rate that we actually need to send varied between 500 and 200, 500 and 2,000 kilobits per second. So about 2 megabits per second maximum. So from 470 megabits per second down to 2 megabits per second. That's uh, uh, 200, almost 250 times less information because of compression. So with video, we can compress a lot saving our resources for the network. If my data rate was one megabit per second, not 100 megabits per second, you would see if you tried to stream that video, you wouldn't be able to watch it or, or the quality would be very poor at the receiver. The data rate of your link or of your, your network needs to be larger than what we're trying to send at to get smooth playback. So what impacts upon streaming a video? And the same with streaming of audio, because we had audio in that case. Main impact is packet loss. We can tolerate some packet loss, but once we get above some level, we start to see the impact at the receiver. And the other one is jitter, or delay variation. Not the actual delay, but the variation between the delay and the packets. First packet has 500 millisecond delay. Next packet is 480 millisecond. Next one is 520 milliseconds. The delay of each packet is varying. That makes it hard for the client to smoothly play back that video. Any questions on how that, those concepts work? are the main things that we need to pick up from this demo and we'll, the, the impacts of performance on our multimedia applications. Is 
So sometime you say on YouTube you stream a video and maybe it plays back smoothly and then it, it stops for some time for a few seconds and then starts playing back again. And we'll see that's because most likely because of some jitter or some significant increase in delay or reduction in, in the, the capacity. It's what's happening there is that instead of getting what we saw where we see this pixelation where we don't see all the pixels correctly, what the, the application is doing is buffering. What it, hap what it does is it plays back and once it detects that there's some jitter in the network which is too large, it just stops the playback at the client, pauses it effectively, and then keeps receiving packets, buffers them up until it can play them back smoothly again. And then it starts playing back again and you may see it plays, it stops and plays again. So most likely because of some jitter in the network or uh, some low throughput or capacity. Okay? We will see that when we look at the slides, an example of that. So after the evaluation, you, yep, we will look at jitter and buffering of our video. Do the course evaluation and then we'll continue.